I'd like to talk about ergonomics for a little bit. Um, I'm having problems in my wrists and forearms right now because of uh, typing and stuff like that. I don't normally have ergonomic problems with drawing, but I wanted to make sure to go over it so that you don't have those those kinds of problems. I think it's very important um, to draw in a, in a good way. I still struggle with it, um, especially with posture. Um, and But I've kind of nailed the um, ability to kind of draw for extended periods of time without a lot of pain as long as I'm maintaining my uh, my technique. So the first setup I want to, the first sort of rule of thumb is basically to square off to your paper. Um, and by square off I mean you take the center of your, your paper or canvas if you're painting and make sure that it is 90 degrees to your line of sight or to your eye level. So that's kind of the fundamental rule whether sitting or standing. Now if you're sitting, a stool is a great thing to sit on. Most people sit on a stool like this and come up to the easel, you know, put their feet on the easel if they can and kind of hunch over and, and draw like this. This isn't particularly ergonomic. It's kind of a little, it feels a little bit lazy and you'll find that that laziness and, and, la and lack of energy translates into your drawing. So in order to give yourself the proper energy, sit um, one side on, one side off the easel or kind of a little bit asymmetrically on the easel. Um, plant one leg, the, the leg that's going to be more bent, that'll be planted on the um, on the stool itself, and the other one firmly on the ground, and kind of get squared off, shuffle into that position, and you'll find yourself naturally going into a position with better posture um, and a straighter back. You want to be far back um, from whatever you're drawing or painting on, as if you're holding like a big beach ball uh, or like a giant sack of potatoes this natural curve of the arms is where you want to be and you don't want to you don't want to reach out and have like a straight arm to draw that's not particularly ergonomic um, and you don't want any anything kind of bent over you don't want to get up close to your drawing and kind of go into the into the t-rex posture this is literally what some people will draw like and and a lot of people will hunch over on a drafting table and draw like that too and that's just no way to be healthy for long periods of time in drawing um, the other fundamental rule is that if you're right-handed, your easel goes on the right side of what you want to draw. So if you're drawing a landscape over here, your easel goes over here. If you're left-handed, it's the opposite. Your easel goes over here, and you draw it over here, and you look over there. The um, It's funny because you do see some people kind of switch that up. Like They'll want to draw something over here, and they'll reach across really far to kind of make this drawing happen. And it always looks awkward and uncomfortable, and it's like a revelation when someone just sort of switches sides. Um, and it's much more comfortable to do to do it this way. Um, now, same thing goes when you stand up. When you stand up, obey the same rule. Readjust the the easel. So that you get the paper at the proper height, and you can draw ergonomically. So I like to think of it as a nice relaxed stance, relatively straight back, natural curve, hold the big beach ball, and step up to your drawing. Now, if you have problems where you kind of encroach on your drawing as you draw over time, you can do things like take your stool and put that in front of you. That's just a reminder to not get too close to the drawing because you physically will sort of bump into it. Um, another thing that you could do, potentially, is to draw um, with, some, with the, with the uh, pad propped on your legs. So if you do that, you might want to lower your seat to a nice comfortable position, grab your drawing pad, prop it on your legs, and find something to prop it against. So this will allow you to draw above whatever your drawing surface is on. So if I'm squared off to my landscape, I just can kind of look down. The danger with this is that you move your head to look down and it kind of puts a lot of tension in your neck and shoulders. So mostly in this position, you want to look straight ahead and look down with your eyes. But you'll notice that it still has the same rules. Um, you're squared off to your drawing. Um, you're kind of far back from it so that you can draw at arm's length. Um, and you're obeying kind of all of the, the good posture rules of ergonomics.
The last thing to cover is how you hold the pencil. Many people hold it like a writing utensil, and so they use what's called the tripod grip. And we'll get a little close up of that. It's the tripod grip right here. Okay. So the tripod grip will naturally lends itself to getting up close. The other grip you'll see people use is they, they kind of turn their wrist so they get a lot of pressure and you can make heavy marks this way. But you'll notice there's a bend in the wrist right there. So that grip is this one. So anytime you see a bend like that, you're probably not drawing ergonomically. The one that I like to use is I've been, I'm just kind of nicknamed it the caveman grip. And it's where you literally drag your knuckles on the paper and just sort of lightly press down and you're not really bending your wrist at all. So this is kind of the grip that I use. So most of that is right here, and you can kind of move like that to add pressure. Um, and that's my favorite way to do that because every all the knuckles and joints are in a natural posture, and there's no, nothing like overly exaggerated, right? Just really comfortable. And if you're having trouble getting into that grip, <coughs> What I usually do um, for people that just kind of can't get the feel of it, it's sort of like playing tennis or golf if you, if you play sports. Basically you grab the tip of the utensil and let the utensil dangle down and you just sort of shake hands very gently with the utensil. And this works for pencils, pastels, charcoal, paint brushes, whatever you're using, it, it's kind of a good grip to use because this allows you to activate your entire body. And you also notice too, that if you're trying to, to draw nice flowing, elegant lines or anything like that, if you can draw with your entire body, it's gonna be better. So a simple exercise is to try, draw a perfect circle, right? So first start with the joints in your fingers, right? Plant your hand down, try to draw a perfect circle like that. Then use your wrist, right? Change to your caveman grip and just say, well, draw with my wrist, see if I can get a perfect circle. Then draw with your elbow, right? Try to focus your elbow. Draw a perfect circle. Then draw with your shoulder, right? Back up, draw with your shoulder. And then draw with your entire body, moving your hips as necessary, right? So you actually draw, activating the whole body. And if you can draw like that, you're gonna get a lot of flow in your drawing and put a lot of physical energy into the drawing. And that's a great way to, uh, to be and a great place to be in your drawing.